Hi, I'm Chad Gonzalez, and I want to take a moment and talk to you about my brand new book, The Supernatural Prayer of Jesus. The Supernatural Prayer of Jesus is based on Jesus' supernatural prophetic prayer that he prays in John chapter 17. If there ever was a prayer that needed to be dissected, taught on, expounded upon, read on, it is this prayer in John 17. In my opinion, if there ever was a Lord's Prayer, it's this one. I'm telling you, Jesus prays out the entire Christian experience. Many of the things that the Apostle Paul begins to teach on, expound upon, many of the things that Jesus spent time and personally taught the Apostle Paul on, and the Apostle Paul went and expounded upon to the churches, Jesus actually prays out many of these things in this prayer. It's absolutely phenomenal. And one of the things that we cover in this book, and I want to talk to you about for a few moments, is about praying from abundance. There is a lot going on in church today, and there's much prayer, there's much praise, there's much worship, and it's all good, but it's coming from a place of lack. You see, friend, if you don't understand what you have, then you're always going to be waiting and you're always going to be asking, and you're always going to be begging. You see, we have a lot of hungry Christians today, and that's good. We need hunger. We need fervor. We need this tenacity of this willingness to, to have more and to experience more. But do you know, do you understand this, that you could have food in your pantry, you could have food in your kitchen, but if you don't know it, you'll certainly get to the point where you're hungry. And when you get to that point of hunger, you'll begin to truly hunger after that food. You'll begin to ask for food, pray for food. You'll begin to look for food. And the reason that you're going to be praying and begging and asking is because you don't know that you have any. And see, that's where most of the church is today. We're praying, we're begging, we're asking because we think that we are in receive mode. But when you begin to understand your union with Christ, when you begin to understand what truly happened for us through salvation, you find out that God shifted our position. You see, when you're far removed from Him, then you are in receive mode. You see, it's kind of like the woman with the issue of blood. That's a story that's used a lot when it comes to the area of healing. And it's a story that's used wrong. You see, Many times when the subject of healing is taught, we use the story of the woman with the issue of blood as an example. Now, she's a great example of how to get healed if you are a sinner. You see, every single person that Jesus healed, they were sinners. Salvation wasn't even available yet. And many times we use the example of this woman that she was pressing through the crowd and she was pushing through and she was confessing, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be whole. And she touched the hem of Jesus' garment and the power of God flowed out of him and flowed into her and she was healed. That's a great example of how the sinner gets healed. Why is that? Because the sinner is far removed from him. For the sinner to get that healing power, they have to get to the source of the power. And yet, you and I must understand that is not the example of how we walk in healing power. Why is that? Because after salvation, I'm no longer the woman with the issue of blood trying to get to Jesus to get my healing. Now, I'm one with the Christ. The healer got on the inside of me. I became one with him, and he became one with me. And that healing power that I was searching for when I was a sinner, now that I'm a saint, now that I'm a son of God, that power is now on the inside of me. You see, you can see this prevalent all through the church. I remember growing up and hearing people saying, Jesus, don't pass me by. Well, how could Jesus pass me by when, again, I became one with him? You see, the Bible says in John chapter 17 and verse 20, when Jesus is praying this, he said, I don't pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. He's praying for all of us. And I want you to notice the very last thing that he prays in verse 26. He said, Father, I've declared to them your name, and I will declare it, that the love with which you love me would be in them. And notice this, underline this last phrase. He said, Father, and I pray that I would be in them. I would be in them. You see, the moment that Jesus became one with us, the, one, the moment he became one with us, 
It removed all of our excuses and it removed all of our lack. You see, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Where? In Christ. Friend, the moment I became one with him, all of heaven was opened up and all of the resources of heaven were opened up to me. I'm not trying to operate out of a window of heaven. I'm not trying to operate even out of a portal of heaven. I have the heavens wide open to me. You see, this is why the Bible tells us to come boldly before the throne of grace to find grace and help in a time of need. All of heaven's resources have been made available unto me in Christ through my union with him. That means I'm not lacking anything. It's why Jesus tells us in John chapter 17 and verse 23, he said, I and them and you and me that they would be made perfect in one. That means you're complete. It means nothing missing, nothing broken. The apostle Paul said in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, he said, Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him. And this is why he said in verse 6, he said, as you have received Christ, now walk in him. You see, we've got to understand what we have so we can walk it out. But if you don't understand you have it, then yeah, you're going to be one of these people that uh, pure of heart and, 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 and the right attitude, I'm hungry for you, Father. And I want to see you. I want to experience you. I want to manifest you. I want to experience your power. I want to experience your glory. But if you don't know that the glory of God has already been poured out in you, what Jesus said, the same glory you gave me, I've given it unto them. If you don't understand that you are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you, if you don't understand that you have already received of Him, then you're always going to be in the place like 99.999% of Christians are with their hands out waiting on an outpouring of God. And yet in reality, Satan really doesn't have much of a problem with you sitting around and waiting. You know why? Because you're going to be waiting a long time. How can God give you what he already gave you? This is why there isn't really much happening overall in the body of Christ. Because most of the church is in receiving mode. And yet when we got born again and we became one in him, one with Christ, he moved us from receiving mode to releasing mode. Listen to what I just said there. Most of the church is in receiving mode. But Jesus, through our salvation, through our union with him, he put us in releasing mode. But see, you can't release something that you don't know that you have. See, even when it comes to the issue of healing, there's many people waiting on healing. But how can you release something that you don't have? You got to know that you have it. You have to know that you are a possessor of the life of God. That in the very same way that Jesus knew he was a possessor of this life. He talks about it in John 5. He said, the same life the Father has in himself is the same life the Son has in himself. And he was saying that as a man. And because of your union with him, the same life that he has flowing in him right now, because he's the vine, you have that very same life, that very same healing power flowing on the inside of you as a spirit being because you are one with him. You see, people will stand in church and, and pray and ask for the Holy Ghost to show up. Ask for God to pour out His power, pour out His Spirit. But friend, God did that on the day of Pentecost. He did that when you received Him as your Savior. He did that when you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He poured Him out in abundance. And He didn't give you just a little bit of the Holy Spirit. Friend, how could He cut up a person? The Holy Spirit is a person, and He gave you the entire person of the Holy Spirit. This is why, again, Paul said, as you have received Christ, now walk in Him. We need to walk in what we have received. God, change your position. So instead of praying for those things to be manifest, you need to pray from a position of abundance. You need to stand in that position of abundance and declare out these things, profess these things, prophesy these things. Not that you're trying to wait for it to show up, but you're speaking out, you're releasing what you have already received. Friend, I'm telling you, 
There is so much, so much good, good stuff, so many wonderful in Christ realities in this prayer right here in John 17. I encourage you, grab a hold of this book. We go into detail, expound these things. I'm telling you, you grab a hold of the things that Jesus prayed for, and because Jesus prayed for it, we know he always gets his prayers answered. The things he prayed for, it's happened through your salvation, but you need to know it so that you can walk in it and be a releaser of the supernatural, a releaser of the power of God, and pray from a position of abundance instead of praying from a position of lack. God bless you, friend. Make sure and grab you a copy of the Supernatural Prayer of Jesus. Remember in Christ, we always win. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.